This week in moto from around the world, it is the end of June. Before we have for the July weekend, for us Americans, Independence Day, you got red, bud. Anyway, back to this week. The top story is Antonio Crowley coming out of retirement to race the new Desmo Ducati and winning the first time on the bike at round four in Italy. Race ended up getting red flag due to weather, but he did beat his teammate Lupino. In the second moto, they battled it out. They got both hole shots, and Lupino ended up winning moto two. So he got the overall with a 2-1 and Caroli with a 1-2. Interested to see how these bikes fare here in America in 2025, I believe, is when they're trying to get released, especially for this 450, might even be 2026. Ducati is going to share no expense at getting a top-tier rider. Could that be Jet? He's probably going to stay with Honda, but that leaves the likes of Tomac, Roxon, maybe even Deegan. Who knows? I'm interested in this motorcycle, and if they don't start releasing the Honda electronic bike anytime soon, that might be one of the bikes I end up purchasing if you can get them because I'm sure that they are going to be on back order for a heck of a long time. Anyway, going to Southwick, rain, but sand does a good job of soaking up rain. You know who is good in the sand? My boy, Tom Vial. In the 250 class, if you forgot, he is third in points. Deegan has a substantial lead over him and Hymas. Something catastrophic has to happen to him we're entering round five and there's only 11 rounds in the pro motocross championship for the 450s hunter lawrence has a marginal advantage over sexton and his brother jet this is a this is going to be a fun race to watch there back with the 250s max anstein and i'm excited to be part of the monster energy yamaha star racing team looking forward to getting this thing going and uh Racing out at Southwick in a couple. Like the background music there. Max Anstein, super fast. He is the world supercross champion. He has won some races here in America in supercross. He is the Australian supercross champion. Is he a better supercross rider than motocross rider? Well, we will find out at Southwick. Star Yamaha rented out the track for about a week. And Deegan looks fast. Deegan looks exceptionally well. We know his confidence is... At an all-time high, his stock price is at an all-time high from his press conferences and his podium speeches, so he is going to be a hard guy to beat. And truthfully, when it comes to Star Yamaha, with it only being five rounds, I don't see any team orders happening if, let's just say, Max Anstey ends up beating him. He's not going to pull over for him. That is for sure. There are some things that I missed from last week that got released after last week's video. Ken Roxon is back racing. He has thrown some big whips that makes his booty hole fill with adrenaline. <laughs> I like the term booty hole pucker, but hey, Ken, I know you're from Germany. You guys just say it how it is over in Europe, so it's probably more accurate than <laughs> what uh, my terminology for it. Cooper Webb is back riding as well. He's been doing a turn track. This was him releasing a statement. Uh, Brace got it moving. Stitches held up, everything's good. Uh, the plan for now is to do turn track for a week or two and then take it from there um, and see see where that puts us come the end of the outdoor season. Keep you guys updated, but uh, yeah, happy. All smiles, first day back. And because of the new super motocross rules and the influx of money for the super motocross championship these riders want to get back to racing so that they don't have to go through the last chance qualifiers for those big paying money rounds which is good it's good for the fans maybe not so much for the riders because they might like to just take the summer off you know Roxon would probably and same thing with Webb with Tomac as well just completely take it off get ready for Supercross because we know these guys need more time off the bike but again, as a fan, it's good to have some sort of incentive to get them back on the motorcycle. And finally, World Supercross released their schedule. It's another four rounds, and they've got one in Dubai, and then they've got two in Australia, which makes sense because this is a series that originated out of 
Australia, and then they've got one in Canada, which is awesome, at Vancouver, and that's going to start October 26th. I would definitely see the likes of Ken Roxon going to that and doing his hybrid series again where he races Supercross, Motocross, and World Supercross, and then Super Motocross because this season does definitely open up to year-long racing action and they're not competing with anybody and maybe that was part of the changing of not having Adam Bailey be the CEO anymore. I believe Adam Bailey is now working with the Lawrence brothers being their product manager. It's to some capacity where he's helping out with merchandise over there. At least that's what I have heard and now you've got Kurt Nickel leading the group over there and it's interesting to see that the schedule is after everything here in america the last rounds of the super motocross is september 21st and then world supercross starts a month later in october so that is interesting that is probably going to leave up the likes of tomac and webb and other riders being able to do that yes manufacturers have the contracts where they want them to race here in america for big series however you could see them doing one or two races over here as their celebrity fill-ins that they have for the allocation of a couple riders per round i am probably the most excited for the canada round and the dubai round to see how that is all going to go down because there is definitely was some need for improvements the last time they were over on that side of the world but i believe they probably have their ducks in a row and are able to get this set up for a banging show you had round four of the Moto Trials Championship where Pat Smage ends up coming away with the win on Saturday and then Toby Martin ended up winning on Sunday. These guys make incredible enduro riders. They're definitely, you can have some guys be crossovers between the trials and actual enduro. Mammoth Motocross had their vet weekend this past weekend where Cole Martinez ended up going 1-1 big arena cross guy he's done some super crosses and he ended up winning both days Sunday you've got a lot of like X factory guys racing these things which is cool it just means that they love the sport and you know they're not near as scared of it as I am anymore round four of the FIM Enduro GP Joseph Garcia come away with the win on Saturday on his KTM, and then Andrea Verona on his Gas Gas on Sunday. Again, this stuff is special to watch because it's always cool when they come into town and they do some gnarly sections that ah, I prefer to walk around. And this is on a lighter note. It is maybe there's some jokes that they have had some motors in them before so maybe it's a two-wheel motorcycle but the tour de france starts this weekend i am rooting for the white jersey taddy he is the giro d'italia champion this year he's actually won quite a bit he's going to do the olympics as well a lot of these guys are going to try to do the olympics that is right after this sucker so it is going to be an interesting tour de france and if you missed there is a Netflix series out there for the Tour de France as is a lot like Driven to Survive, which I highly recommend. I really wish they would do that for Supercross because it gets you hyped up. Yes, uh, Jay said on his podcast that Netflix reached out to Supercross, I'm assuming Feld, and they wanted to say, hey, they could do it for $5 million, and they declined it. Mm, allegedly, that is the scenario. However, that $5 million would have paid dividends because this stuff is amazing i love it the at least the netflix shows of it gets you hyped for everything they've got an indie 500 one out there they've got golf ones out there and it gets you hyped up about sports that you either didn't know existed or you didn't think that there was that much depth to them so highly recommend that the unchained here is an excellent excellent series and unfortunately We've got more sad news to cover. X Games winner Matt Byton, uh, also known as B10, ended up breaking his spine at Lakewood this weekend trying to qualify for Loretta in the 40-plus class. Lots of heartfelts go out to this guy. He has been 
very transparent on his Instagram on how he feels. And I've asked some people that I know that have been in his scenario to reach out to him to give him some wise words. It's it's heartbreaking, absolutely heartbreaking. It, it shows you how crazy this sport can be and how instant it can go from 100 to zero. But this is not the end for this individual as well. I know many cases where guys end up becoming better people and they have a growth through the whole process because of it. And so my prayers go out to him and his family. And there is a road to recovery if you guys want to check that out. It says that his link is on his, for his cause pays on his Instagram. I couldn't find it, but if somebody else knows it, please let me know in the comments below and I will pin the message as well. But as always, Guys, keep it WFO. Until next time. Bra -da 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 -da.